are going to be chatting with me here this morning on the No Morning Show. I want to welcome, firstly, Alvin. Good morning, Alvin Brown. He is the creator of the Manly Man series, and we've met before on this show. You've met Alvin lots of times on this show. Um, and also with me on the phone, actually, is Asiya Mohammed. She's the CEO of Conflict Women. So good morning, Asiya. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you guys both for being here. I want to start with Asiya, actually. Asiya, what's the purpose and impact of the Conflict Women organization? Yeah, thanks so much for that question. We've been working now for several years to end uh, um, gender-based violence through entrepreneurship. So we financially empower survivors. We provide them with free business training, access to capital for their small businesses, mm -hmm. because we know while many may live in abuse, when it comes to leaving or exiting abuse, it's quite challenging because they may not be financially independent or they may not be empowered to do so. Okay. And Alvin, tell me what's the purpose uh, and the impact of Manly Man, the Manly Man series? Well, the, the Manly Man series basically encourages young men mm -hmm. to be responsible. So we talk about things like emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. the importance of taking responsibility for your actions, so that we don't get to the point where there is actually uh, an incident of domestic violence. So it's preventative, Yeah, ideally. All right. So, um, Asiya, tell me, what, what are femicides? All right, so femicides are when someone is murdered. So we have a homicide, but we have a femicide. So someone is murdered, a woman is murdered, a woman, a girl, and it's based on gender, right? And so for this year, we've already seen 21 femicides in Trinidad and Tobago um, up until recently where we saw Ashanti Riley being murdered. We know she boarded a taxi, and the next thing we know, she was found murdered, right? We also had um, recently Crystal Primus um, Espinosa, who was murdered, but we're still unsure as to whether that can be counted as a femicide because investigations for that are still ongoing. So just to be clear, when you say a femicide, it's because they're, they're murdered because they are women? Basically, yes. Interesting. All right, Alvin... There's, there seems to be a relationship between criminal activity and fatherless homes. What, what, hmm. How can we change that narrative? How do we address that narrative properly? Uh, well, there are a number of ways that we can. Mm -hmm. So first of all, for those who are not in fatherless homes, the whole intention is to how can they be taught the skills that would have been acquired in a home that had a male representative? Okay. So, especially things like emotional intelligence. Now, mm -hmm. um, statistics have shown that children who en engage in, in um, rough play, which is primarily done by the, the men in the home, mm -hmm. actually are able to regulate their emotions better. So, so that is one thing. So the, the question is, if it is that you are in a, in a home that is absent of a father, the persons who are there can seek to find good role models outside of the home. Mm -hmm. um, engage them in, in, in sporting activities and in, in, in ways that will ensure that they have the ability to, 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 to physically get out what they need to. Exactly. Okay. And to develop emotionally. Okay. So sports and, and physical activity are meant to help with not just your physical development, but your emotional development as well. Definitely. Because it, it's, it's like, no, yeah. COVID, because of the COVID-19 period and because of the the fact that we're in quarantine mm -hmm. still in, in some sense. Mm -hmm. We have gyms aren't open. Right. Um, you can't go down the road and sweat mm -hmm. legally. Legally. You can't gather and sweat properly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And so the question is, how do you release that? How do you monitor or, or manage your emotions? Mm -hmm. And, and that, is, that is some of the questions that we ask and some of the questions that we seek to answer. All right, um, Asiya, I, I, I want to focus a little bit on getting out of, of the situations. You know, what, you said that your company helps women to get financially on their feet. Yeah? Yes. Yes, um, what are some of the What are some of the major challenges when it comes to, to, you know, taking a woman from being, you know, somebody who's dependent on a man and getting out of that mm -hmm. situation, no one's saying, all right, well, I want to stand on my own two feet, but I don't know where to begin. Yeah, I mean, there's so many challenges. We know, for example, that the time between when a woman decides she's going to leave and when she actually leaves, that's the most dangerous time for her. Mm -hmm. um, there's 
so many challenges. One, children may be involved, right? So a lot of women, um, even though they may be facing physical, emotional, or verbal abuse, they think about their children and they decide to stay because of their children. The other is emotional attachment to the perpetrator. So many women um, who experience abuse, they would tell you, you know, you know, this person manipulates me emotionally, but I'm so attached to him. And there's this sort of misconception as to what is love and is love abuse and is love beating. So there's, there's that sort of attachment as well. And then there is also um, the logistical um, arrangements that need to be put in place if someone needs to leave. So, for example, a woman may be economically dependent on her husband, right? This mm-hmm. is just an example. Yeah. While well, their accounts may be joint which means she can't move a significant amount of money from the bank without his authorization or permission. Right. Let's assume they live in a family house and she wants to leave. Where is she going to go? That's one of the like sort of first logistical questions. Does she have another home? Most women don't. Do they have family they can stay with? In some cases, yes, but in some cases, no, if they lack a support network. So there are multiple challenges. And then finally, I guess I would speak to the issue of danger and safety because some men actually say to survivors of abuse, if, of abuse, if you try to leave me, I will kill you, you know, or, or they threaten the children. They sometimes threaten um, animals and pets in the household. Um, so there's also that major um, fear factor from mm-hmm. a woman, which is very real, yeah. um, as to what would be the consequence if she tries to escape or if she tries to leave. Hmm. Alvin, how do we get men to deal with rejection? Hmm. That's an excellent point. It's one of the challenges that a lot of men have is the whole idea of, of identity. Mm-hmm. So if it is that they view that their worth is based on what they have, then they're basically reducing themselves. And if it is that they believe that their worth is based on what they have, then they will view others as objects as well. Mm. And if it is that they are of the opinion that that lady is mine, Mm -hmm. then if it is that she wants to leave, he believes that he's been robbed. It's taken away from his possession. And if he believes that his possessions is a measure of his worth, then he feels that she's taken away from his worth. And that is one of the reasons why you have men um, acting out violently. So it's, it's one of the things that we need to develop is for men to appreciate their worth and hence appreciate the worth of others. But society teaches us that you're worth as much as your bank account most times. Ah, and that's why we need to change the narrative. Because so, so what happens if somebody who's extremely wealthy crashes on, on an island? Mm-hmm. Does he now become worthless? Well, he's dead, most likely. Oh, well. I mean, <laughs> if he so, survives. Right. You know, if he survives, is he not worthless? Right. He, ha- he doesn't have access to his, his cash. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the idea is to have men recognize that their worth is based on them being a human being, being created by the creator. And one, it, it, it's, it's that the saying, you know, you, you can't love someone unless you, you, love, yourself. you love yourself. Yeah. You can't give someone worth unless you recognize that you yourself has worth. So it's, it's, it's one of the things that we seek to develop, the whole idea of emotional intelligence and yeah. self-identity. Asiya, can you tell me some of the things that you would like to see m- men do better in order to be able to help this situation on the whole? Yeah, that's a good question, and and I'm glad that you have Alvin in the studio because I think men need to speak on this, Mm -hmm. right? So what we do know is that 85% of all gender-based violence is perpetrated by men against women and girls. So in terms of the proportions, the proportions are not nearly equal, right? In terms of who are victims, who are survivors. 85% of women and girls are on the victim side, and that violence is perpetrated um, to them by men. So I think what needs to happen is that for a long time, we've seen women come out and champion this cause. We've been championing gender-based violence. Um, A lot of what we say has fallen on deaf ears. There have been some changes, et cetera. But we need to see some very encouraged when, you know, I hear from people like Alvin, who's on the show this morning, 
um, in terms of men actually coming out there and speaking to other men and being role models, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm not I'm not a man's activist, so I will leave that to Alvin to, to speak on. What I speak on is how we protect our women. And, and, and there is that segue there, and so I'm glad to hear about the work that he's doing in terms of prevention, in terms of masculinity, etc. That work has to be done, and the best people to do it is our men. I completely hear you. Uh, Alvin, would you, what would you say are some of the challenges that you've met so far in trying to address this to men? Um, honestly, I haven't had much challenge. Yeah. Um, I've, I've focused mostly on young men mm-hmm. and even the young men who don't have father figures, a lot of them, they just don't know. Right. And even some of the ones that give trouble, mm-hmm. when you, you look, when you sit down with them and you explain the consequences to actions, they are a lot more receptive than you might think. The issue is that we don't necessarily tell them what to do. Mm-hmm. All right. And, and that's one of the challenges that we have. Um, so you have fa- young men growing up in fatherless homes. They go on the block. Mm-hmm. They hear the garbage. This is what you need to do. That's how you need to treat a woman. And they presume it is correct. Mm-hmm. And then they start to emulate it. Or they see their, their, their fathers having a negative um, interaction, interaction with and presume that that's okay. other women. Yeah. But once it is that we have that dialogue, as, as is rightly stated, then we, you, we come to recognize that it's... it's easier for, the, for you to change the, the younger ones. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it, nothing is completely easy. Mm-hmm. But if it is that we continue to have these, this dialogue with, about emotional... Int- you know, one of the things I've recognized is this. You know, oftentimes we tell guys, you know, young men, little boys, you know, don't cry. Man you know, yeah, you know, yeah. you're soft. Or, or if it is that they come to to a parent with a concern, you laugh it off. Yeah. When they reach 15 and they're not sharing, you say that he's, he's, he doesn't Close talk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. So we have to recognize that emotions are not a bad thing. Being upset, being angry is not a bad thing. It is how you work through it. Exactly. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Alvin. As well as Asiya Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us. She's the CEO of Conflict Women, and Alvin is the creator of Manly Man series. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to continue discussing this. I think it's a topic that has to be ongoing until it changes for the better. Definitely. Yeah?